Krista Forrest, it is such an honor and a pleasure to get to be talking to you again today. Welcome to the Yoke and Abundance Wise Thank Women you. podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so you and I met because you were a part of the Creativity Summit that we did, I think this past fall, or no, spring. And <laughs> <laughs> like, when was it? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> And you and I have some things in our background in common, because I believe that you worked in corporate America for a while in I the did. financial I industry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if you can tell folks a little bit about who you are, what your background is, and what keeps you busy. Okay. Well, I am, my name's Krista. I'm a full-time artist. Uh, I specialize in creating expressive female portraits. Um, this is my second journey in life. I had a 20 year career in finance um, and I decided at you know, one point in my life that this was not bringing happiness to me uh, and I quit, I left it and I started painting full time. It was something I was always passionate about and that I wanted to do. Uh, and I haven't looked back. <laughs> uh, and I continue to paint and uh, a lot of my time is spent teaching others to you know, see and kind of experience their journey or creative process. Um, and you know, hoping people, other people can take that leap. You know, it doesn't have to be so, um, you know, quit your job type of bold decision, but taking the leap to do something that you're truly passionate about is really, I think that's really important. Yeah. And your work, I was just telling you before we jumped on, I am such a fan of your work. I mean, you paint these beautiful goddess women and they, when you say that you do expressive female portraits, I mean, they are expressive. Like you can feel the energy of these goddesses when you look at the work that you're putting out. And I can't wait to have one someday. <laughs> Well, this one, yeah, I just finished her. She's for a show uh, tomorrow that starts. It's called Amplified Voices. Um, and a gallery here invited, um, you know, artists of color to uh, submit work. And this is actually on a, you know, those real estate, those, you know, the political signs that they put outside. It's actually on one of these uh, <laughs> I don't know what you call it. It's like a board. Yeah. Like okay. you put the sticks on it. So these are actually going to go outside um, and they're going to, they're going to put, stick them in the ground. And so when you drive back, kind of drive by, it's kind of looking at all those political signs, but they're going to be artwork. <laughs> Art on them. I mean, so um, I live in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we, a few weeks, is it, it's probably been two weeks now, we had peaceful protest and we had riots and a lot of our downtown ended up boarded up and we there's been a huge movement of artists to put like political art and non-political art and um, black lives matter and and george floyd's face and all of it and so you drive downtown in our downtown now and it is covered in art and wow. <laughs> it's just like the most exciting thing where you're just like, wow, look at, look at how much beauty came of, of all of that, right? Like of the protesting as well as, as the rioting and look what, look like look, when our community comes together, look what it does, you know? That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, where I am, it's pretty quiet, you know, in Connecticut, I'm in Fairfield County, Connecticut. So not a lot you know, going on with protests and, and I mean, there's very small, um, but with the pandemic, you know, what's been incredible is that they've actually closed streets and um, we've become almost like a little walking town, you know, sitting in the streets and eating and, um, you know, less cars. So, you know, I don't know, you know, some of these, some of, what's been going on lately has created these amazing communities um, artistically and just able to, and socially, you know, being outside, embracing nature, putting artwork outside, 
um, finding ways to adapt to everything that's going on. So there's been some positive things. Um, I haven't really left the house all that often, <laughs> that much. I pretty much say, um, you know, home, but I, you know, I do try to, you know, get out and, you know, kind of experience nature, which I don't, I haven't done. That's something that fuels my creativity as well. Yeah. Well, I was curious. I mean, I know that you teach a lot of courses and you've been extraordinarily busy over the past few months with the pandemic. And do you, I mean, how do you feel like art is helping us through this? To, how do you, and maybe we don't even call it art. How do you feel like making and creating is helping us through this time? Um, I think people, even before 2020 started, <laughs> um, I think people uh, are lo always looking for an outlet, whether it's yoga, whether it's uh, music, or whether it's any type of outlet to separate themselves from the real world or whatever's going on in their world. You know, you go to a yoga studio and you kind of sit in Shavasana and you're, you're in your own space. Um, and I think creativity is this kind of the same thing. It's you get into, you open a sketchbook, a piece of paper, and you end up getting in your own space and everything around you kind of blurs, I guess. And you can spend that time, whatever it's an hour or half an hour, um, just kind of focusing on where you are, right where you are right there. Um, and I think people yearn for that. And I think during the pandemic, um, me, I'm happy to be home. I love being home by myself. Not everybody's like me. And I think some people are really struggling with that social aspect, being out and having to, uh, you know, interact with others. So I found that I got a lot of people who reached out to me to do virtual stuff um, because they needed that outlet. Um, and creativity, I think it's just, I don't know how to explain. It's just almost like this meditative process. Um, and it's almost this, you know, just this journey that we go through and um, it brings out so many feelings and it brings out, God, I'm trying to think of the word here. It brings out so much, you know, community, I guess, amongst, you know, you know especially when I get people together. Um, and it brings out communication and it, it brings out, it just brings out so many feelings, whether you want to deal with them or not. But I, I think people need that. And I think people have dealt with a lot of uncertainty. Uh, and, you know, you can kind of dive into your sketchbook and let all that out. Uh, and you can share it or you can just kind of close the book and put it away. Um, so I've, I've found that a lot more people are looking for that lately um hopefully that lasts because it's kept me busy but it's also keep allows me to share um what i have to share <laughs> yeah absolutely i i have been personally painting so much and i feel like i i like to create i like to play in in all sorts of different ways and personally I just had this recent revelation about my singledom <laughs> and like I was dating someone and it ended and I realized how happy I was because it ended and how I have this life that I love and it, all in that same week. I mean, I was prolifically painting. Like, I don't know that I ever have and just like feeling like fully like divinely feminine, like in my full goddess self. And I was like, this is what it feels like to be an artist. <laughs> like, this is what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a fun thing and I just I think the act of creating and putting our feelings and stepping into who we are being able to put that on paper in some way is such a profound experience in some ways and I wish we could like bottle that up and give it to everyone yes <laughs> especially now I, I, I you know I really feel like it's just these little drops of happiness and positive energy it's these little, this energy that um emits and that you know if, god if we could just touch everybody if i could touch everybody um 
you know, if I could go viral and just be able to touch everyone with what I have to offer, you know, maybe the world would just be so much safer and happier and fulfilling. Um, you know, I, when I was in finance and I live in Fairfield County, which is a very wealthy area and being in finance and managing people who have millions of dollars and um, that I can't relate to, um, but, and, and seeing how, and seeing and feeling how unhappy they were, even though they had everything, um, that was a big, uh, it was a big reason why I had to leave that uh, environment. Um, and if, you know, they, they all, their only outlet was spending money. And you could see that because I would, that's all I would do um, is spend their money for them, you know, and take care of their transactions. Um, and the simplest form of just creating, you know, they didn't, they didn't have that. They would buy art but they didn't have that outlet of just kind of creating or even writing or um, just kind of allowing what's going on inside them to come outward. They just took on that materialism and it's a lot here and it's, it's very difficult. Um, and that's why I left. I couldn't handle that, the stress of others, I guess. I felt like, you know, you know, maybe I was, you know, practicing empathy. Maybe I was a true empath. I was taking on that stress for them. I don't know, you know, but as soon as I got out of that, it was, it was an amazing feeling and I could just flow outward with my creative flow and, and process. And, you know, I hope that I can touch others, you know, to, to be able to flow that way. Um, it is, it's such almost like a rebirth almost. <laughs> I can't even explain the feeling, but, you know, uh, you know, I just want to share that. That's all, you know, I don't really care about making millions of dollars and selling paintings. Um, uh, I just enjoy sharing. Yeah. I know that you were telling me before we got started that um, you've been so busy and that you haven't had a lot of time to create for yourself um, recently. And I'm, I'm wondering, what is the difference for you of getting to create just for you and, and having to create for a show or a commissioned piece um, or for a class? Like what's that energetic feeling that's different for you and does it change your process? Uh, a lot of times I'll take somebody else's online course and I'll just play, you know, I'll learn something um, from someone else or I'll kind of just play in my sketchbook, make mistakes, you know, just kind of let go. I don't worry too much about the perfection. Um, when I do stuff for a show, um, I struggle. I have a lot of unfinished paintings. <laughs> that I have not finished, that should be finished at this point in time. And I just don't have the energy to, to finish them. Um, because there is that perfection just kind of comes back in and it's, you know, I'll see, you know, I do it too. And I try to tell people not to do it, but I do it, you know, I'm on Instagram and I see somebody else's painting and it looks amazing. And I'm trying to do the same thing. And, you know, I just can't compare. Um, and you try so hard not to do that, but we're human. We do that, you know, even the clothes we wear, our hair, I mean, we do it naturally. It's, there's no way of getting around it. Um, but that's the difference. I don't, I don't compare when I create for myself. Um, I compare when I create for a show because someone else is going to look at it and, you know, the, the rejection can be really, um, difficult really difficult um so that's the difference i need to learn how to get over that get over that feeling of perfection or comparing to others um because it really uh it pre prevents you from moving forward like i said i have about five paintings sitting here that are completely unfinished <laughs> Um, but then again, I don't have any, there's no outdoor, usually I do shows or outdoor shows. Those aren't happening. So the, the, 
the pressure isn't there to get them done. Um, but still, they should be finished. I don't have any, you know, un, you know, everything's, they just sit there in, uh, you know, unfinished world, I guess. And I have a ton of them. Um, but I find if I film or I do something, you know, I do a video on YouTube or I film something and I'm sharing it, I tend to finish it because I don't have that feeling. Um, you know, I don't have the feeling that someone's going to reject me. Um, but that's the difference. I really haven't had time to just kind of create uh, for me or, you know, and I mean, everything I create, I want to sell. I need to make money here, but um, I don't, you know, one of my goals is to finish a sketchbook. And I don't know about you, and I know other people, so I know I'm not crazy. Um, I collect sketchbooks. <laughs> I collect like empty sketchbooks. I love buying them. I just don't finish them. So I have a ton of sketchbooks that are not finished. I know I'm not the only one because I have talked to other artists that do it too. Um, and that was my goal this year to fill one up and then share it on, you know, do a video sharing it. I haven't gotten there yet, but. <laughs> you'll do it. I know you'll do it. <laughs> I'll just send you little Instagram messages and be like, how's your, how's it going? How's it going? <laughs> I must have 20 of them and I just bought two more. I, <laughs> I feel like, I think writers do that with journals and, you know, sketch, you know, those that like to draw do that with sketchbooks. Um, I do also have that and I've kind of <laughs> come to the conclusion that I, because I started painting so much, I was like, Maybe I just, these don't need to go to anybody. They don't need to last forever. This does, like, these paintings don't need to be on a canvas. I don't even, I took the pictures that I did. They were small, even over to a friend's house and gave them to her children and be like, just pick the one you want because I, I just want to paint. Yeah. Painting. <laughs> and so I thought, well, yeah, can go in a sketchbook. I can just put wax paper between them and they can go in a sketchbook. <laughs> so I get it. <laughs> You know, you talk about that feeling of, of dealing with rejection. Like, do you feel that when you're at a show sometimes? And, and how do you work, like, how, how do you move that out of, like, your mind and your body when you feel that feeling? It's tough. I don't do a whole lot of shows. I don't do a lot of shows where I have to get juried in because I can't handle the the rejection at times um it's tough it's really it's a, it's one of those things that it's very difficult to shake you know because your your art is just from within mm -hmm. you know when somebody you know comments negatively about it it hurts you know and um you know, I, I think sometimes I avoid it and I, should, I shouldn't avoid it as much as I do. Um, I don't need to do a lot of shows anymore because it's just too, too much work. I only do shows that either have, um, you know, they're, they're, they're benefiting something. So the last show I did, it was, uh, it was about empowering young girls, young teenage girls. So, you know, of course my art's going to get in. I knew I wasn't going to get rejected. Of course, they're going to love my art because it fit their, their theme and their statement. Um, but, you know, so I'll, I always play it safe. You know, I'll be totally honest. I do. I play it safe and it's rare that I, you know, throw my art somewhere where I know I'm going to get, you know, um, there's a art, it's called the Bennett Prize and it, it's a, they give out a huge award every two years to female artists. Um, and they, they, it's a husband and wife that promote female artists because female artists don't get a whole lot of, you know, they're not in museums. They're not, you know, most, it's, it's a men's industry, a male industry. Um, and I've been wanting to submit for so long but it's I'm never ready, you know, because the art is so amazing. These artists, these female artists are just so amazing. And I feel like I'm just not there yet. Um, 
and knowing that I should, I should just do it, right? Because you'll never be there. Um, but it's, that is difficult. It's not really rejection, because I know I can't, it's, it's tough to compete with some of these amazing artists. And I know I shouldn't compare, and I know I shouldn't um, be scared about putting it up there against them. Um, but I, I don't, it's, it's a tough, it's one of those things that artists really struggle with. And, you know, I see people who are beginners struggle with even just posting something in a Facebook group, you know, they're so scared. And me, I'm like, oh, just do it. It's everybody loves, you know, no judgment. Um, but I understand how they feel. I can definitely, you know, a lot of artists don't admit to that. You know, they don't admit to their, because most artists have huge egos. Um, <laughs> But I'm fine to admit that because I do. A lot of my students and a lot of people that, um, you know, listen to these podcasts and a lot of people that follow you and several others deal with that same thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think and, it's know, important I think that it, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, I do too. And, you know, Krista, I think about it a lot with, um, you know, I love Julia Cameron's work, The Artist's Way, and I teach a couple courses. I've taught some courses around that, and I'm doing one right now. And I think about how much negative information we get coming in telling us, like, oh, you can't be an artist and this, or an artist and that, and an artist. Like, we get so many negative messaging to us about our creative selves. And what you were saying reminds me of how important it is to to nurture, shelter, and cocoon our our creative selves. And I don't think that doesn't mean don't take risks. So so um, so I'm gonna have a caveat there. But I think especially in the beginning, when we're like, you know, we're reading chapter one right now, and 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 Julia Cameron talks about how first you have to you have to be brave enough to suck to like really be bad in the beginning but like and to nurture that and like not share your writing your like your morning pages with other people because it's not supposed to be art it's your morning pages and like so that you don't get that negative messaging in but um Krista your work is amazing so I'm going to tell you what I would tell, I'm going to tell you what I would tell a client and I would say um think about what's the best that could happen you know like like if you were to submit it, like what, even if you didn't, like, like it didn't get in, like there's still really great things that could happen from submitting. Definitely. It's definitely on my list to do. Um, but I find it so much more fulfilling when I create a course and I develop something for others. And that was scary too. That was, you know, trying to get that first course launched and pressing the button to publish it. I was terrified because, you know, I just didn't think, is it right? Is it, am I good enough? You know, am I, you know, am I worthy? You know, am I, you know, do I have the enough knowledge to mm -hmm. teach others? Um, and when I just kind of pressed the publish and I just did it, you know, it, it just made it easier to continue on. And then people start reaching out to you and can you, can you do something for me or can you do a course for me? So um, it was just kind of getting over that fear. Um, and I enjoy teaching really more than I enjoy putting my art into a museum or a, or a show. Um, because one, you know, people look up to me and they love my art. So I always get that positive. It's rare I get any negative, you know, any negative energy from that. Um, so it is positive and I can exert that positivity onto them. So it's really fulfilling. It's still, still fearful, you know, filming courses and, you know, I hate the way my voice sounds. I hate how I look on camera. I hate, you know, you hate, you know, I hate everything. Um, but you just do it. And, you know, and then people are like, oh, my God, you sound amazing. Yeah, so it's, I, you know, you need to get over yourself. <laughs> that is so hard on so many levels. You know, I can, you know, I get over myself and it's like, you know, wow, all this, 
negativity that I'm allowing in is so, you know, how wasteful that is because people actually like what I do and like what I share. So, wow, if I just let all this negativity out away and, you know, embrace what they have to offer me and offer them what I have, um, you know, things work. And, you know, if I didn't get rid of that, I would have never, I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah. Um, so yes, we need to take risks. We need to let go of that negative layer that we put around our, our safe, you know, we stay in our little safe space. Um, let me close this. Can you? <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Can you hear that? <laughs> like, it wasn't bad. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's like they decide to do the lawn like every single day. Um, I've seen that happen. So, like, I'll, <laughs> my lawn guys never tell me when they're going to come. And so I was doing an interview a, like a couple weeks ago and like right in the middle, it's like, Rrr! and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> But it was, you know, like, it's, it's just kind of taking that risk. And, you know, I'm, Yes, I'm, there are things that I'm fearful, risks that I'm fearful because I just can't deal with that rejection right now. Um, but I'll, you know, you work, I keep working at it. I keep practicing, you know, my work will get there. I just need to pre keep putting in the work. Um, and eventually I'll be able to emotionally take that risk. Um, but, you know, where I am right now, that was a risk. And I'm glad that I jumped into it and I didn't, you know, hold back because I hate my voice and I don't like, you know, how I look on camera and, you know, I didn't have all the equipment at the time, but I did it and it's, this is where I am now. <laughs> I'm really curious about, um, so you do a lot of basically women's faces, like goddesses. Um, do you ever paint other things and where do your ideas for paintings come from? Like where do you get visions for your work? Like where does it come from? Um, well, I started as a landscape painter. So when I started, when I quit my job, I was painting landscapes. Um, and I don't know, I just kind of didn't get any feeling and I would have them up, I would take them to shows and they just weren't selling. I mean, it was just kind of like I was a drop in the bucket, you know, I was like everybody else. And there was just no, nothing kind of connecting people to my art. And then I started uh, painting women. And I don't know what, you know, I think I was, it was during, you know, I think Hillary was running for president. And I think during that time, people were just, it was, you know, Pe women wanted to be empowered, I guess. And people, and I started using stencils. I, don't, I wish I had one here. Um, I wasn't painting faces. Um, I started using a stencil. It was the same stencil and I would create these paintings using this stencil and then I would change. I would add collage and all this stuff. So same stencil, but I'd make different women from it. And, um, you know, I kept doing that. People, women, people, I'm not going to say just women, uh, connected with it. And people started purchasing my paintings. And I'm like, oh, maybe I have something here. Um, and then I kind of took the risk because I hated painting faces at that time. I was, it was something really uncomfortable. Um, I started drawing faces, actually drawing, getting rid of the stencil. And at first they didn't, they weren't too good because I really didn't know, I didn't had, I had no experience painting skin tones or painting human faces or, or how to do it. So they didn't look too good and I struggled, um, but I kept practicing and practicing. Um, so everything where I am now is taken a lot of work to get there. Um, but Somehow, when I started doing my outdoor shows or putting up my tent, people, you know, started coming in. They started connecting um, with the work. They would, you know, you know, look at my work and, you know, they want to hear the story about it. Nobody ever asked me that when I painted landscapes. Um, they wanted to know my story. You know, no one ever asked me that when I created landscapes. So I found kind of what 
worked for me. I found my creative journey there. It finally happened. Um, my inspiration, I will, sometimes I use, comes from my head, you know, um, and then a lot of times I'll use photo references as inspiration. Um, I've met a few people online that um, I've been painting continuously. Uh, they've become muses um, that I focus on. And I'd like to, I was trying to, it's just really hard to take the time to get a model, is to actually focus on actual uh, women who have their, a story to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's my next, my next kind of step uh, in this journey, um, is to find women, paint them, and tell their story. Um, so it's just finding women to do that, you know. Um, but I'll get there. That's, that's where I think I want to go. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm wondering if when you start out, do you have like, is it that there's this woman that you have to get out on paper? Is it, or is there, do you start with what you want people to take away? Like, does, is that, does, does, do you think about the audience, I guess, when you create, or are you really trying to bring something out on paper and whatever it is, it becomes? I mean, usually it'll be a photo. Either I'm scrolling through Instagram and I see a photo that of a pose or maybe the lighting. Um, I have another app where I get photos of people. So usually it's a photo that kind of sparks me. Mm -hmm. um, or it's, you know, like in this, this case, it was just, the show was called Amplify. And this is pointing this way. This is Lisa, who I've painted several times. I have several paintings of her. I don't know, I've never met her, but we're, we've kind of connected online. Um, and she had this photo where she's screaming. And I thought it was the perfect pose for what this show is about, Amplifying Voices. Um, so usually it's just like, maybe the show has a, a word or something that's kind of, and I have a photo that works well with it. Um, and then sometimes, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, occasionally I'm, maybe there's a theme, I'm thinking of a word or a theme and I want that specific pose. Um, and then I kind of draw that. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I just kind of, it just, I don't have a plan in place. It just kind of happens. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I go with a face and it, it's just not working for me. And then sometimes I'll start and it just kind of flows and finishes and I can get it done. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. And then the, usually I'll name the painting afterwards. It's a split second kind of decision. I look at the painting, the finished work, and the name just kind of come, whatever comes out first is usually how I name my paintings. <laughs> Great. And so I know that you've said you've got some um, live sessions probably coming up that you're going to be doing where folks can hop on with you and do some work. So they'll need to look out for that. But what else do you want to share about your work, about the creative process, about your courses, anything you want to share? Uh, well, I do have a lot happening for the rest of this year. Um, I'm actually working on a course right now to um, do portraits in pastel in watercolor, which is a little different. Um, as I started using pastels, that was my first medium of choice. So I'm returning to my foundation and I'm doing portraits in pastel and teaching that. Uh, the live sessions, um, I want to do a lot more of because I think people are kind of looking for that. Um, and then hopefully doing, you know, more kind of one-on-one, -on -one, more, you know, structured kind of courses for anyone that's looking for some individual guidance on painting. Sometimes people just need that little, you know, helping hand, just that little, you just need someone there to do it just to get started or get rid of, get 
take that risk in themselves. So I'm looking to do that. I have a lot of courses in the works um, and a lot of things going on till the end of the year and next year. <laughs> Exciting. We will link to your website and I just want to encourage everyone to sign up for your email list and to get on so that they can be abreast of all of the wonderful offerings that you have coming up. And I'm hoping we can get you into a sacred maker happy hour that's coming up um, sometime <laughs> this year. So, um, so the last question we always ask on the podcast is how do you live a life of abundance? Wow, how do I live a life of abundance? <laughs> um, you know what? My husband and I, we made the decision that we live life based on experiences, not what we have. So when we, you know, when we spend money or we decide what we want to do, it's an, we make sure it's an experience. Um, rather than, you know, materialistic things. Um, and I think those experiences that we share with each other and my, and my children are really important because those are those memories um, and experiences are really important for relationships and for just, you know, really getting balanced within yourself. So, you know, I think that's how I live my life. Everything I do is based on, you know, is it going to make us happy? Is it going to create happiness within us? If it's not, then we maybe we need to go on a different path. Maybe this isn't where we need to go. Um, and my husband always says that if, you know, usually if he sees me getting upset, he's like, if this is going to upset you, you can't do it. <laughs> um, and he's so right. I don't want to hear it at the moment, but he's right. Um, you know, I need to make decisions based on, does it make me feel good? Is it, is it creating positive energy around me? Um, is it, an ex are we creating this positive experience, you know, to travel and see and, and see things that, you know, create happy memories? So I think that's how, you know, I live and my husband and my family that we live you know, an abundant, a life of abundance, you know, abundance isn't really financial for me. It's more of ex an abundance of experiences. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you. And Thank, you. Your wisdom. Thank you for having me. <laughs>